I am announcing today that I will resign as governor of the state of Oregon. It is not in my nature to walk away from a job that I have undertaken. It is to stand and fight for the cause. And so I apologize to all those people who gave of their faith, time, energy, and resources to elect me to a fourth term last year and who have supported me over the past three decades. I promise you that I will continue to pursue our shared goals and our common cause in another venue. I must also say that it is deeply troubling to me to realize that we have come to a place in the history of this great state of ours where a person can be charged, tried, convicted, and sentenced by the media with no due process and no independent verification of the allegations involved. But even more troubling, and on a very personal level, as someone who has given 35 years of public service to Oregon, is that so many of my former allies in Common Cause have been willing to simply accept this judgment at its face value. It is something that is hard for me to comprehend, something we might expect in Washington, D.C., but surely not in Oregon. I do not know what it means for our shared future, but I do know that it is seriously undermining civic engagement in this state and the quality of the public discourse that once made Oregon stand out from the pack. Nonetheless, I understand that I have become a liability to the very institutions and policies to which I have dedicated my career and indeed my entire adult life. As a former presiding officer, I fully understand the reasons for which I have been asked to resign. I wish Speaker Kotek and President Courtney and their colleagues on both sides of the aisle success in this legislative session and beyond. And I hope that they are truly committed to carrying forward the spirit of bipartisanship and cooperation that has marked the last four years in Oregon. In 1968, I was inspired to commit my life to public service by the last campaign of Robert Kennedy. Forty-one years ago, I started work as an emergency room doctor in Roseburg with a goal to make life better for those in my care. Ever since then, I have sought to keep that focus by trying to make things better for the people and the communities of this state that I love. I have had the extraordinary privilege of pursuing that work as a state representative, state senator, senate president, and as your governor. Over those years, I have had the honor to be part of some remarkable achievements. We responded to the worst recession and financial crisis since the Great Depression by rebuilding an Oregon economy that has added jobs and vitality in many regions of our state. And unlike many other parts of our nation, we did it together with cooperation and respect for Oregon and for each other. We successfully defended Oregon's spectacular natural heritage of clean water, clean air, forests, farmland, and special places. We created the Oregon Plan for Salmon and Watersheds and nearly 90 watershed councils. We have also found ways to support our rural communities and to create jobs in our natural resource industries while enhancing the environment. When forces of intolerance sought to divide us, we stood up for the principle that every Oregonian deserves respect and basic rights, including the right to choose and the right to marry the person we love. And I am proud that Oregon has not invoked the death penalty during my last four years on the watch. We have stood by our working men and women, steadfastly supporting collective bargaining and the right to form a union. We have transformed our health care system, improving access and quality while lowering costs through our new coordinated care organizations. Tonight, over 95% of Oregonians will go to bed knowing that they have health insurance coverage. We did that together. In a three-day special session, we reformed our public pension system, provided tax relief to small businesses, and raised new revenue for mental health and for public education, the foundation of our future. We have passionately pursued the goal of equity and opportunity, especially for those Oregonians who have been left behind, communities of color, English language learners, and those in poverty, those in rural parts of our state, the very young and the very old. We have laid the groundwork for eliminating the achievement gap and ensuring that over 90% of our children could be reading at level in third grade within five years. And we are poised to reach agreements that will resolve the century-old water crisis in the Klamath Basin and expand irrigated agriculture in the Umatilla. As important as what we've accomplished, how we have accomplished it is perhaps even more important. We have had a great tradition of overcoming partisan differences in this state and doing what is right for Oregon. That tradition had faltered, but over the past four years, we have rebuilt a functional political center, reaching across party lines to do difficult, important things by reducing polarization and building community to help right the ship and chart a better course for the future. I ran for a fourth term as your governor to continue that progress, but the questions that have been raised about my administration specifically allegations against me concerning the work done by my fiancée, Sylvia Hayes, and the contracts she obtained during my last term, and the escalating media frenzy that has stemmed from this has clearly reached the point of no return. 
I am confident that I have not broken any laws nor taken any actions that were dishonest or dishonorable in their intent or in their outcome. That is why I ask both the Ethics Commission and the Attorney General to take a full and comprehensive look at my actions, and I will continue to fully cooperate with those ongoing efforts. I am equally confident that once they have been concluded, Oregonians will see that I have never put anything before my love for and commitment to Oregon and faithfully fulfilling the responsibilities of the public offices I have had the honor to hold. But it is also clear <clears throat> that this process will take months. I have always had the deepest respect for the remarkable institution that is the Oregon legislature and for the office of the governor, and I cannot in good conscience continue to be the element that undermines it. I have always tried to do the right thing, and now the right thing to do is to step aside. One thing I hope people know about me is that I love this state and its people, its rivers, its mountains, and its landscapes with every fiber of my being. And it is because of that love that I tender my resignation as governor effective at 10 a.m. on February 18, 2015. Secretary of State Kate Brown will take the oath of office as Oregon's governor at that time. Oregon will be in good hands, and I wish her well. Thank you for allowing me to serve you in our state. It has been the honor of my life, and I believe I can say that looking back over those years, we have left it better than we found it.